That's the Let us all stand as we start our proceedings tonight. We'll invite Mr. Fire Lander, student of the All Saints University School of Medicine, to lead us the national anthem. Isle of beauty, Isle of splendor, Isle too all so sweet and fair. All must surely gaze in wonder at thy gifts so rich and rare. Rivers, valleys, hills and mountains, all these gifts we do extol. Healthy land so like all fountains giving chair that warms the soul. Thank you. Thank you. Let us remain standing as we invite Pastor Peterson Benjamin to lead us in prayer. Pleasant night to you. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, the Bible declares to everything there is a season and a time and a purpose for everything under the sun. This time around, it's Rosa South season for a housing development. And we will rejoice and give God thanks in this, knowing that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it to stop it or to hinder it or to take it away from Rosa South. May God grace this development with his presence. May God grace this development of his wisdom, with his kindness, with his protection. May God grace this project with his angels and camping round about it by night and by day. May the spirit of the Lord reign over Rosa South. May God continue to bless the government of this country. May God continue to give wisdom to the leadership of this country. May God continue to watch and protect this government and the leadership of this country. May the wisdom of the Holy Spirit reign over the developers, the builders, the architects, every aspect of this development. May God continue to watch over us all. Father, we thank you. We commit, O oh God, this time into your hands. We commit this procedure before you. And we ask, O oh God, that the angels of the Lord would encamp round about us. Father, we ask tonight that from this day forward, that the blood of Jesus Christ would form a canopy over Rosal South. Let every distraction, every source of witchcraft and necromancy be brought down to the very pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And let Jesus and Jesus alone be Lord, Master, Savior, and Redeemer of Rosal South. 
We bless this procedure with your wisdom, with your grace, and with your kindness. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening to all. Let us first of all recognize the presence of the Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Minister of Housing and Lands, Senator Jaiser Benoit, Mr. Christopher Timmins, Ms. Shakira Hippolyte, other members of cabinet present in our midst, May also recognize Pastor Peterson Benjamin of the Point Michel Abundant Life Church, the Firelander, Miss Angelina Williams, Mr. Emord Peter, members of the re residents and citizens across the Rosal constituency, persons coming from Bafé State, Silver Lake, Kings Hill, Newton. Eglistan, Girodel, Lubier, Wharton Waven, Fortney, Titrone, and if all the others. Right? Good afternoon to all. At this time, good evening, I'd like to invite to the podium Senator Jaiser Binois so he can give you an official welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Master of Ceremony. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure at this time to acknowledge the esteemed presence of our Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, here with us this evening. Also, along with him, Honorable Miriam Blanchard, I want to welcome her, and other members of Cabinet, which we under who we understand are on their way. Also want to acknowledge the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Housing, Mr. Reginald Sevre. Also our winning candidate in the Rosal South constituency, Mrs. Shakira Lockhart Hippolyte. We want to acknowledge Mr. Christopher Timmins, Project Manager of MMMC and Developers. He'll have a lot to tell us this evening. Also to Mr. Firelander who started us off with our National Anthem. I want to welcome you, sir. Want to welcome Pastor Benjamin, Mr. Emmott Peters, also, also affectionately known as Mr. Emmott Scarit Peters. <laughs> Miss Williams will be also sharing some words with us this evening. We want to welcome our council members, members from the Rosal City Council, members from the Lubia Village Council, members from the Girodel Eggleston Village Council, members of the Baffer State Development Committee members of the Silver Lake Development Group. Also, I see we have members of our legal fraternity here with us this evening. One and all, residents of Rosasov, Silver Lake, Emsol, Kingsley, Lubia, Girodel, Eggleston, welcome. It gives me great pleasure to be issuing or to be giving this brief welcome remark to this very auspicious occasion. Rosa South is a dynamic constituency. In fact, it is the third largest constituency in the country. And that's just to speak of its geographical size. In terms of the population of the Rosa South, it's one of the largest in the country, with a voting population of well over 8,000. And so you'll understand that the socioeconomic situation in the Rosa South is very diverse. You have the very affluent, you have some that are not so fortunate, but they're still getting their thanks to this hardworking Dominica Labour Party government, and we can see that they are making strides. Brothers and sisters, as I welcome you to this important town hall meeting to discuss the important aspect of housing development in the Rosal South, I know that we have a lot of questions to ask, we have a lot to say. I just want to invite you to be open minded, sit back, relax, and enjoy our program this evening because now is Rosal South time. It's our 41st year of independence, and one day, after our independence celebration, our Prime Minister is here in the Rosa South with us. So let us put our hands together and make everyone here feel welcome, brothers and sisters. 
at this town hall meeting. Without any further ado, I will take my leave at this time. Thank you very much for your attention and welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. I think he has certainly awakened our energies. And knowing that we have just come in from the Salivier constituency, we are partially drained. Rosas of constituency can be called the tail of the two cities. And why do we say that? Because when we look across Rosas of, we have the extreme, some of the most beautiful homes that are perched on the hillsides all across the constituency. But also, too, we see that there are some deprived areas, some very vulnerable areas, where individuals are trying to use every square inch to actually build a comfortable place for themselves. And so this brings us here. How do we balance out? How do we remove this disparity between the have and the have-nots? How do we as government respond to the needs for housing across the constituency? So as part of that response, you may have experienced, many of you may have experienced where the government had placed monies in the various village councils and it is disbursed either directly to you or through a, a signed contractor where they have been doing some response in re, 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 renovating your roofs, rebuilding your homes, or just giving you a little top up so you could get some additional monies in the bank to complete your housing project. We are here today to introduce another housing solution. We have labored over the past months to find suitable lands in order for us to pursue as many housing solutions in the Roseau constituency as possible. And as we come closer to that point where we have identified suitable lands that will address some of the issues that usually confront the risk associated with the lands in, in the Roseau South constituency, the construction capacities that lies, the many individuals who have the ability to build good homes. We have the construction costs, which has raised significantly over the past months, and especially in the post-Maria era. And we also have the issue of many individuals unable to access financing to build homes on their own. So as government, we decide to respond. And that response can be echoed as I invite two individuals from the Rosa constituency. First of all, I will invite Mr. Ahmad, as they say, Ahmad, Garrett. So let me invite Mr. Ahmad to share his own experience about being responded to by the Ministry of Housing, followed by Ms. Angelica. Let's welcome him. Hello, liberal rights. Good evening, good evening. They say me liberal rights, Papa. Hey, I'm not following, but you know, just a short thing. Uh, I'm very so glad, uh, and sorry, good evening, my PM, and my sister, Ketura. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once I was blind, but now I can see. Yeah. And uh, it got off pitch and, and pray, because I never had a mind I would be on a new roof tonight. And the name of my house is Red House. Red House. So I'm so very glad for the Prime Minister and, and Mrs. Ketura to give me this very, very, very good help. So um, I don't know what to say again. I'm so glad and happy. So that is a very short word I have to say tonight. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Ahmad. Let's invite Ms. Williams. everybody. Who that don't know my name, my name is Angelina huh? and Shakira, Minister. Good night. So glad did the house. Does on her side, Maria bring it on her side, now it comes straight. <laughs> and I glad for a 
I glad for Prime Minister. I love Prime Minister and his country. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And so the process continues. Government has a number of housing initiatives that it is undertaking. And as a result of those undertaking, we are able to respond to the vulnerable among us in society. And let us give the Honorable Prime Minister as leader who is Minister of Housing and Land a round of applause for his leadership. At this stage, I'm going to introduce Mr. Christopher Timmins, who represents Montreal Management Consulting Enterprise Limited, who is in partnership with the government of Dominica to build resilient homes across the country. As of December, it is expected that they will hand us over 1,000 of these homes. You may have witnessed over the past weeks that we have handed commitment letters to many citizens across Dominica, from as far north as Georgetown, to the east in Grand Four and La Plaine, to, the, to Cassibros, and we are extending this good tidings by coming into Rosenthal so that you too will have the opportunity to receive similar homes. So Mr. Timmins, as I invite you here, he will present to you two solutions in what government is doing, both in housing and also in health. Mr. Timmins. Good evening. Let me first recognize the presence of John Bill Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of Commonwealth Dominica and Minister of Housing and Lands. <laughs> Honorable Cabinet Members, Mr. Reg Severin, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Housing, Pastor Peterson Benjamin, Senator Josiah Benoit, Shakira Lockhart Tipolik, Emmett Peters, Mrs. Williams, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen of Rosso South, good evening. Have I got anybody? Sincere apologies. Now, Reg has already told you exactly what I was going to tell you, so I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> yeah, but in the last few weeks, we've been up valleys, we've been in, uh, over the top of mountains, we've been down mountains, we've driven along paths where Actually, I was with Reg, and he's nearly getting out of the car, saying, you're too close to the edge. And I said, well, I can't go the other way. I've been shown good land, land not so good. I've been shown some land, which is amazing, if I had a Chinook helicopter to get to it in the first place. So we recognize that the land in this constituency is a real challenge. You know, one of the greatest challenges now facing the world today and in particularly in the Caribbean, is climate change and its consequences. Unfortunately, in this location here, we're taking the brunt of those changes, and it's out of all proportion to the impact the residents of this region are making on the climate. Now, it's a basic human need to be able to have safe, secure housing, providing independent street family, safe from the ravages of what might be happening out and we at MMCE take trust placed in us by your government very, very seriously. And as we've hopefully proved today, and as Mr. Severin said, by the end of this year, we will have handed the keys over to nearly a thousand new resilient houses. Now, please be assured, I'm not here today to show you something that's not going to happen. What you're going to see on the screen is going to happen, the cast iron commitment. You know, and climate-resilient housing. It's not just about the house. Yes, we're going to provide you a structure to be able to withstand the worst the weather can throw at. It's going to be bullet. We're going to have reinforced concrete structures. We're going to have reinforced concrete roofs. Over the top of the roofs, we're going to have aesthetic purposes just to make it look nicer. We have a secondary galvanized terracotta-colored roof. So we should also provide additional protection as well. 
we also in within that structure you will have hurricane proof windows 30 you're going to have solar water heat you're going to have led low energy lighting so that domelec don't get any rich <laughs> we were here during maria and we saw what happened in our own houses at the time that we were living in how the small simple details could lead to the loss of a house which otherwise would find the way the water built up on balconies the way the water came under people's front doors the way but for the sake of another 20 or 30 fixings on the roof perfectly good a house would have survived and the roof lost We've considered all these things. We've allowed for increased depth, the thresholds underneath doors to stop water coming in. The roof structure, as we said, we believe it's gonna stand anything. But the other challenge to us was the services. All the services will be underground, the electricity, the water, the fiber optics, so the internet generation can carry on looking at YouTube, whatever else they want to do. And in the event, of the main grid going down, it will be simply be a case of bringing one generator, plugging it into the local panel, powering up the whole new development. No more single generators in every house. Now, this part of the island, as we've said, is very, very challenging. And whilst in my time in Dominique, I now know that a piece of flat land is anything up to 40. It's been difficult to find land on which it is safe to build climate resilient housing. We can't build where there's like going to be lands. We can't build where it's going to flood. And I suppose one of the advantages after the hurricane and after Erica was, we knew where the new flood plains were. We knew where the water course was going to go. And these hope we managed to avoid. I'm going to show you tonight um, three different solutions for three different types of housing. One's in Bath Estate, one is in Eggleston, and the other is, I will say, it's in the Castle Comfort Newtown area. I'm not going to say you where the land is, because until the government signs the contract, the price might double if we announce it tonight. So, we're, the final, config, final configuration of the types of houses we're going to have will depend on the applications from yourselves. Please get your applications in quickly. If you want to start quickly, I know the Prime Minister would like me to start tomorrow. Yeah, so. so, and we're also going to show you the new health centre, which is going to be going in Castle Comfort. So let's, without further ado, let's first look at the first video. Let's see what's been achieved in the last 12, 15 months in the country since we restarted and what the, exist, the new thousand houses look like. Obviously, Bellevue Chopin, I think everybody from this part of the world knows Bellevue Chopin now. You've got 353 homes. Fantastic. There's only one problem with 353 homes. They take 45 plus acres. We'd love to build this all over the country, but Trying to find 45 acres is very difficult. Castle Bruce, Castle Bruce, the residents have moved in now. And Delise is, is fated to finish for Christmas moment. Grand Fond, the, the first residents are due to move in any day, along with La Plaine, Pansover. Georgetown, first residents are in there. There's 24 moving in this week. And Cotton Hill, where the first residences are now available for occupation from Thursday onwards. These are our new project in Grand Bay. In Jimmit. In Stock Farm. and it's fully funded by the CBI program. Right, if we can go to the second slide. Uh, 
So in Rosso South here, we're going to have 78 new residences. So here we are, Bath Estate. I'm going to say everybody who's been and looked at the completed ones in La Plain, in Grand Fond, in Castle Bruce, been impressed, thank God. You get... Everything we, it's either three bedroom, there are some two bedrooms. Everything is two bathrooms. The, the second bathroom is always en suite to the master bedroom, so you can get some privacy. This is our solution for castle comfort. So it's 24 units initially, three bedrooms. And these are similar to the three bedroom apartments we've already constructed up in Bellevue. So if you need to know what they look like, go up and have a look. And then Eggleston going forward. These are actual so these are the actual thing. And Eggleston, Eggleston's a different solution. Eggleston, as I don't need to tell you, is difficult terrain. So the solution here is provide individual homes. So the plan is 24 bedroom, individual homes, two bathrooms. Again, quick. <laughs> so of course, good housing, but we also need good health care. So we have identified the land in Castle Comfort. We are getting to the point of signing the contract to purchase it. And this is what you're going to get. And this is what's going to start very, very soon. Every health center has two overnight beds, has two doctor's clinics, has nurses clinic. It has a pharmacy, has an examination rooms, obviously waiting room. It's hurricane proof. It can double as a hurricane shelter in the case of Diane. Upstairs, there is a two-bedroom apartment, which is actually a better standard than uh, most of the housing in the country. It can occupy up to four nurses, but certainly very, very comfortable for four nurses. So they're always going to be there in the health centre 24 hours a day. We are presently now contracted to build 12 of these throughout the country, and we've already commenced on six of them. We can flip to the last video. Now, this will be of probably particular interest to the potential residents of Bath State. These are actual shots taken inside the new apartments. You can see fully fitted kitchens, granite worktop, hooker hoods, 14 foot high ceilings. Three bedroom, two bathroom. And we're quite proud of the bathrooms. The bathrooms wouldn't go amiss in a five star hotel. But all residences get those now. We've, you know, one thing I am going to say, and Prime Minister will probably shoot me afterwards, but I went to a meeting just over a year ago, and we presented the pictures of the Bath State Building. And there was a gentleman there, he was an elected representative, and he spent 0 0.2 seconds reviewing the drawings we gave him, and threw them across the table. And he said they were photocopies of a building taken from a glossy architectural men magazine for rich men in New York. Now he was wrong. It was purpose designed building. It wasn't taken from a glossy magazine. It has been built and it's still being built in Dominique. And it's not for a rich man in New York, it's for every man in Dominica.
Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Timmins. Let's give him a round of applause. So at this time, I would like to introduce the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Housing and Lands. Thank you very much. Let me greet all of you here present tonight. Uh, Senator Binwa, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Housing, Mr. Christopher Timmins of Montreal Management, the developers. Um, my colleague minister, and of course, uh, Ms. Shakira Lockett Hippolyte and all the wonderful people of the Rosa South constituency. Good evening. I am very happy to be here tonight to present to you the residents of Rosa South to part of the government's solution to the housing challenge which you have in this constituency. We recognize that the housing needs here in this constituency is very huge. But you have a challenge in access to uh, safe lands, suitable lands for housing. And of course, Tropical Storm Erica, the the trough of 2013, and of course Hurricane Maria would have exposed the increased vulnerabilities of many communities within Rosa South. And so we have tracked the entire Rosa South constituency to see where we could get lands that are suitable for building these resilient, resilient homes, homes in safe areas. So in the event that we are impacted by a hurricane or a storm, our citizens and residents will be safe and comfortable in this home. And so tonight, we're making a commitment to build in the first instance 150 residences for the Rosa South constituency. And These are concrete commitments to you, the residents of Rosa South. And you have seen what this government has done in numerous communities across Dominic. When we said to the nation that we would relocate the entire Pilitzaban community, nobody believed us. Because this was a huge task, which was never undertaken in our country. To build a one home is a challenge far more to rebuild entire community, entire, entire communities. And in the, that instance, we had both Jubik and Pilit Savan to relocate. And what people thought would never be done has turned out to be the best housing project anywhere in the Caribbean. <laughs> and when we started to build those homes after Erica, we said we we're going to build back better. And we said to the nation that when we build back better, if a storm similar to the might of Erica were to visit us, we would be in a better position to withstand. And by the grace of God, we were, these houses were able to withstand the ravages of Hurricane Maria. Why, though they were under construction, not one of these homes were impacted by Hurricane Maria. And you know what? Had that village been completed before Maria, these people would have been in the safe homes during the hurricane. And we went further and we placed all of the electrical lines, all of the telephone lines on the ground. So when you go there, you don't see any lines running across the property. And this is over 45 acres of land. And you don't see any wires whatsoever running. They're all underground, so that making it more resilient. And so after Hurricane Maria, we said to the nation that we're going to build the world's first climate resilient country. And that we have taken on board a far-reaching vision and a strategy and a plan to implement that vision. 
And housing is an important component because we all knew where we were after this hurricane. That with 90% of your homes impacted, many parts of the country you cannot build anymore because they're no longer safe based on what the waters did to us. Many of our homes were impacted. And so we have embarked on a national program dubbed the Housing of the Nation, where we have mandated ourselves as a government to build 5,000 resilient homes for our citizens across Dominic. And you know what we're doing? We're not creating any classes in our society, in our country. We are doing the same homes all over Dominica, the same quality, the same finishing. Whether, you, whether it's in Rosa Central, whether it's in Portsmouth, whether it's in Dallas, whether it's in San or the Carnegie Territory, we're giving the people of Dominica the same quality of resilient homes for our citizens. <laughs> and so these are not, these are no pie in the sky promises. These are firm commitments, and we will be in a position once you tell us that you're okay with what you've seen, we will move to the next step of signing the contracts to, to commence the construction of this one. And, and so, this is our firm commitment. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand and be serious about our country, where our country was two years ago, and where our country is today, and where our country expects to be in the next five, ten years. And as we've always said to you, and I'll repeat here this evening, that a country is not built on hate, it is not built on lies, it is not built on seeking to create mayhem or destruction of a country. You build a country on vision and hope. You must articulate a vision, and you must give people whom you want to lead or you will be leading the hope that you will get to the promised land that you set for yourself. That's how you build a country. And, and that is the difference we have in this country. When we come to you, we come to you about how we can work with you to help build this country. What can we do together to make life better for you, your families, and your communities where you live in? There are people who will come, and all they will come and talk about are negativism, character assassination. But the point I keep making to us, that if being negative could build a country, Dominica will be one of the richest countries in the world. And we have also said to you that when you say you're going to do something, you must be in a position to access the resources needed to do what you say you're going to do. And we have always said that these, the friends of this government are not transferable. My friends are not your friends. And your friends are not my friends. And, and therefore, when you, what if you say you're going to do something, you must say how you're going to do it. By what means are you going to achieve it? And so, for example, the international airport. When we said we were negotiating for funds to build the airport, we knew what we were talking about. And you heard yesterday in the announcement, that the government of the People's Republic of China has committed to funding the airport. And you have to understand, you have to understand that these things don't come overnight. It is, it is based on, 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 on a mutual trust. It is based on a relationship over the years that the government of China feels so comfortable with the leadership of the country that it can provide such a huge amount of money to it. And, you know, I always, always keep saying to us that we have to reduce the running of a country to our own individual relationship. You're not going to go and write a blank check or give somebody a, a big money for a bank account if you don't know the person. Would you do that? But if that person is your friend, if that person has been there with you in difficult times, that person can rely on you. When that person comes to you, you will give the person the help. And, and that's what it is. And I keep saying sometimes you in a relationship, you have your husband or your, or your wife. But there are times your husband friend, you're not your, you know your friends. As a matter of fact, when you're home, the husband can't be that friend home. 
But he's your husband's domino partner. But you can't stand Mr. or Mr. Come him, so he can't be fellows home. And so, and it is, it, is, it is similar at a country level. It is similar at a country level. You, may, you, 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 you cannot say that my friend is your friend. You have to have the mean. And other thing too, my friends, is that, you know, I am being criticized for going across the country and handing over keys to people to a new home. But the fact is, for you to be a leader of in any level, you must have an appreciation of the struggles of people whom you will want to lead. You must know how people live. You must know their dreams and aspirations. You must know what keeps them up at night, what worries them. And you must find solutions, policies, programs to address their concerns or to give them that opportunity to, to live their dreams and aspirations. And this country is not perfect. We have a long road to go. But one cannot contest that this government has done a remarkable job for the people of Dominica. When you talk about the young people and job creation, we have agreed to set a very solid foundation by our investments in tourism, for example, by the government being a facilitator, utilizing the CBI program to allow for investors to invest in hotels. And not far from you, we have the Jungle Bay. And just two days ago, we opened the five-star Kempinski Resort, 100, 160 rooms. And I, I happen to have gone there, and many of you may have driven there and, and, and going there. I have not seen any hotel of that caliber anywhere in the Caribbean. So our country, our country is becoming of age. Our country is making strides. And our country will get there. And then we have, as a government, as a party, we have recruited new blood, young people with new ideas, with a new sense of energy, and a, and a sense of commitment to assist with building and continue to build this country. So this country is really in safe hands. And in the next five years, you'll be in even safer hands going forward. Because this is about the future of our country. This is about the welfare and well-being of our people. And this is what we have to recognize in the times we're living. Because I have been around for some times yet, for some years, and experience is important. Experience in these very difficult times is very important. Because if you do not know how to navigate that world that we're living in today, that world has become so complex and so difficult that if you do not know how to navigate this world, you are in difficulty as a country. Because our country, Dominica, we do not have all of the resources required, the money is required to do what we have to do for ourselves. And so you will always have to rely on some friendly government and relationships to help you access the resources, the monies to help build this country. And you cannot, this is not a time for people to learn on the job. That's the time for the day after the next election, whoever, the government has to start working. Has to start working. And, and this is the only government, the only party that has articulated a vision for this country. Only. And the only party that can tell you exactly what it's going to do for people. And who can tell you where the monies are going to come from to do the things for the people. And the most important thing, one of the most important things as well, is that we have delivered. When we say we're going to do something, we deliver to the people of Dominica. So when we're here tonight, and you saw the folks here from Silver Lake, we should call it back in this Fly City. We knew how Silver Lake was a few years ago. And this government went in there and have, and, have, and have transformed the lives of the people of Silver Lake. To the point, to the point 
that one of the most, one of the poorest communities in Dominica at the time was Silver Lake, but they were the safest people at the, at the time of the hurricane because of the homes the Labour Party government built for them. And this hurricane, Maria, while it affected all of our homes, including where I was staying, not one window in the homes we built, 40 people in Silver Lake got impacted by Hurricane Maria. As a matter of fact, some of us may, may have been even looking to go to Silver Lake for shelter during Maria. That's how we have been able to elevate the lives of the people. And so when I am criticized by some about scariness giving handouts, I keep saying to people, I don't give anybody handouts or pity. All I am doing is to assist people in getting up from where they are. Getting up from where they are. We're giving them a hand up, not a hand out. And you know, we have to be very careful about people who begrudge people who get assistance. Because sometimes people forget where they were. And you see, I tell people, you see this Yes We Care program? We almost applaud it. I applaud it some, most of the time. Because the truth is, today I'm the Prime Minister of the country. I will get old sometimes. And I do not know what tomorrow holds for me. I may very well need a Yes We Care program when I turn 85 years old. So when we are in a position or when we want to aspire to be in a position of leadership, we have to show love and care for people. And if you do not love people, you will never appreciate this. And this is why they have always been criticizing everything good that the government is doing for people. The other side is criticizing it. Every single thing. Every single thing. And so they, they build homes, they criticize it. And they're saying to us, we're giving people too much nice homes in Dominica. But they do not know how you live. They do not know how you're surviving. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to be here. I am happy for the residents of Girodel and Egliston who will get some decent homes. Because I know of the housing challenge you have in, and land challenges you have in Jerusalem. Yes, you have nice agricultural land, but they're not suited for construction. In Eglistan, for example, there's no more land. Outside of the land belonging to um, the, the um, Blanchards, and, and we, we went there, but we cannot build there because access is difficult. We have found that luckily we found another site, and so we'll be building those homes. So the, those persons who are living on the squatted land in very poor condition, we'll be providing for you as well in those new homes. The residents of Lube and, and Madrell and, and, and Newtown and Citrony, we don't have land in these places. We don't have land. Most of us are renting from somebody. And sometimes we are on a piece of land, we don't know whose land it is because that person left America so long ago. And so we'll be building homes in Castle Comfort. There's some lands there. We're going to acquire it very soon. And then we'll build a beautiful, beautiful community for you, the residents of Rosa South, Rosa South in there. In Kings Hill, we'll be acquiring some lands up at Rygate to build some homes for the residents of Kings Hill. Because those of you who are living along the ravine there on the back street in Kings Hill, we have not, that's the only area that we have not regularized. And we have not regularized them because we have always told them that that place is not safe. But we understand because every family, every human being, your, one of your main objectives is to find a shelter for your family. And so these people have squatted there, not having access to land, not having the money to go and buy, buy a lot, and they build their homes on the ravine, but it's dangerous. But at the same time, you cannot go and take them out if you don't have an alternative to offer them. And so we will be coming to them, offering them a safer environment, a safer place, a safer home, a more comfortable home, so that they can get out of this ravine that every time it rains, that they have frightened for their lives and for the lives of their children and so forth. So we present freedom to you as well. In Baffer State, we'll also be putting apartments there in Baffer State to provide for the residents of Baffer State and the wider Rosa South. So what we're seeking to do is to take care of every community within the Rosa South area and ensure we provide adequately for them. And so 150 residences is a lot of homes and many families. And for me, personally, 
You know, even if it's one person we can help at a time, it is something that we will give God praise. Because one person who is in a more comfortable home is one less person who is vulnerable and living in poor condition. And we have to also understand, and we understand this as a government, that some of us, we've had the means, we have a job, thank God, we are appointed, we have a relationship with, with a financial institution, we can we have a piece of land, we can go to the bank, the credit union, present our documents and get a loan and build our homes. But there are many of us, there are many of us who will never be able to have the home because of the challenges that we have. And what do we do as a government? Do we say, well, pray and roll your rosary and, and something will happen? Yes, you have to pray. Yes, you have to roll your rosary. But when you pray and when you roll your rosary and you go to your government, your government is in a position now to assist you in building your home. So your answers, your prayers have been answered. And that's what we're doing here in Rosa South. So I'm very happy to be here. And with Montreal management, they're the ones who have built the Belvis Chope for us. They're, they're the ones who have built the homes in Portsmouth and in Cassibus and in Laplin. And we've all seen the quality of work that they have done. And so what we say and what you see in these in, in this photographs, that's what you'll be getting here in Rosa South. And so I'm ready to start. And of course, the health center, the contract has been signed for the health center. Presenting it to you here. It's a health center that will provide a more conducive place to provide medical services and nursing services to our residents in the area. And it also provides for a residence for the district nurse, so that the district nurse will be resident in the Rosa South rather than having to live outside and come in when, when he or she is called. So our country and our constituency are moving places. And so we have to continue to hold hand and recognize what is, what is the greater good for our community and our constituents in Dominica and work together towards achieving our goals and desired objectives in life. And all we provide, we come to provide to you and offer you is a sincere and honest approach to engagement. We, I am not in the business of playing games with people's lives and people's feet. That's not what I came into politics for. I came into politics to serve people. And that's what I have, I have done. And all of the skills and the talents and whatever the Lord has put into me, I have put out to at the service of the people of Dominica. And that's my commitment going forward. Because we came in, we came in, and I came into politics not looking for a job. I came in to serve. And I say to people, politics is a vocation. It cannot be for looking for a job. It cannot be a job-seeking opportunity. It is a vocation. Because you must be prepared in a vocation to make personal sacrifices for the greater good of the people, the people whom you lead. And if you don't understand how people live and you don't, you're not prepared to make sacrifices, you have to be wary of these people. Because as it says, many are called, but few are chosen. And in a vocation, you have to be called. And you have to be chosen. And so this is not a job-seeking interview. This is about leading people, guiding them, being there for them, making sacrifices for them. And you know who your friends are in difficult times. And you knew who you saw when you were at your lowest ebb. You knew who cared for you when you were at your lowest ebb. And that is important. Your friends are not those when you have a party, everybody shows up. Your friends are those, if you're sick, they come to see you. If they hear you not well, they come visit you. And they're there for you in difficult times. And these are the people you know. And we have in Sister Chikura Lockhart, he pulled it, a wonderful young lady. And I mean, and she messages me every single day on all issues relating to this constituency. Very, very passionate about it, a go-getter, and I look forward to her leading the charge of the total transformation of the Rosa South constituency. So you are in safe hands at the local level, and you're certainly in safe hands at the national level. And so our country is moving forward. We have to stick together. We have to work together 
who was building this place. And when we come here to you, as always, is to talk about positive vibe. It's to present to you plans and programs to improve the lives of this country and to improve your lives and your family life. And we have proven ourselves, not only in the last two years since the hurricane, but our entire stint here in government. And so when people say that we have been too long and so on and so forth, yes, we accept that we've, we've, we've been there long, but what is too long? And if, if this government is working, what's the issue? And you don't just change single change and sick. Then what's, what's the alternative? There is really no alternative in this country. And we know where we have to be and seriously uh, in, our, in, our, in our going forward. And so they are very exciting times. They said, when we said hotels will come in Dominica, they said, no way. When we said five-star hotels will be built in Dominica, internationally branded, they said, no way. When we said we'll build home, homes for people, resilient homes, they said, that can't happen. Every, when they say we're going to build a hospital, they said, that's, that's, a, that's a lie, scary, you know, some Chinese, he didn't hear what the Chinese say. <clears throat> What's happening today? All of what they say, we could not deliver to the people. We have delivered to the people. And if you have, if you have a government that says one thing and delivers that one thing, then that's a government you can trust and you can rely on going forward. Because all of the time, our word has been our bond. And when we say something, we work towards delivering. Sometimes it takes longer, but at the end of the day, we deliver on behalf of the people of Dominica. So I really, I'm really happy for you. And I've been, to, I've been through all this constituency. I have seen how many, how, you, how, you, how some of you live in the, in the difficult circumstances you live. You have come to me and spoken about this. And with all your best efforts, you have not been able to address your living condition. I'm saying to you tonight that very soon that will be something of the past. Because we are committed to making these homes available to you. And making them available to you and ensuring your ownership of those lands, of, of those homes. Where we'll be providing each of the beneficiaries with a certificate of title in their name, in their name, so that you can ensure that when, when you do leave this earth, you can hand over to your children, your children can contribute in a safe place. So we are not over, only providing for this generation, we're providing for, success, for successive um, um, generations to come, you know, so that we have a resilient society, a resilient um, um, country. So I'm very happy to be here, ladies and gentlemen, in, in due time, you will have a decision to make. In due time, you will have a decision to make. But I am comforted to know that you here in Rosa South, you know exactly what has to be done because you know who has your back and you know who will be there with you in difficult times and in good times. So I thank you for being here and I'm very happy to be here for you. I want to again thank MMC and to say to you that all of these homes will be financed by the Citizenship Investment Program. And we have used that program to directly impact in a positive way the lives of people in Dominic. And that's what we've been utilizing the funds to do, impacting the lives of Dominicans, improving their lives, improving the opportunities, increasing the opportunities for young people so they can get decent jobs in Dominic. So, the future of Dominica is very bright. And 20, the year 2020 is going to be a very, very bright, bright, positive year for Dominicans. Because we'll be realizing a number of these things that we've been dealing for in our country. And had it not been for the hurricane, we'd have been much further. But again, it is said, in every disappointment, there's a blessing in disguise. And we have taken that blessing and we have undisguised it, and we are now implementing that blessing with a lot of pride to us to build a new Dominica, a more prosperous Dominica, a more resilient Dominica, and a more just Dominica that benefits all of its people across the length and breadth of Dominica. So I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here tonight, and we will move immediately to take possession of the lots, the sites, so that we can start these homes 
and then I shall come back next year, God's willing, to hand over the keys to the 150 beneficiaries of the Rural South Constituency. And, and by which time, Shakira will not only be giving the vote of thanks, but she'll also be giving a major speech as, as your pal rep of the Rural South Constituency. So, thank you very much. God bless you. Let's give him a round of applause. As we fold up tonight, I'd like to invite Shakira Lockhart Hippolyte to give us a vote of thanks. God is good, and all the time, let us again give thanks to the Most High God for his continued blessing of life. Together with salvation, it is his greatest gift to all of humanity. It is through his divine grace and mercy that we are gathered here today. Special thanks goes out to the Honorable Prime Minister, our leader, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt. <laughs> Mr. Christopher Tibbins, MMC's Project Manager. <laughs> the officials of the Ministry of Housing and Lands. Rosa South, good evening. Rosa Sof, let me hear you. That is Newton. This is Harlem. And I'm a Harlem girl. And I know that Harlem people have a lot of love way. And we will be victorious on the night of elections. It is the hand of God that is working through this Labour Party government that brings this type of fascinating development to you, the people. Words cannot fully express or completely embrace the deep joy and profound gratitude that I feel in my heart for the housing and health plans that have been outlined to you this evening. The issue of housing has been and still remains to be a major concern of you, the people, and a very top priority of this DLP administration. Our government's record on housing development is unprecedented in the history of the Caribbean. We, the residents of Rosa South, are confident of the DLP's ability to deliver on those plans which are just part of a series of very forward-thinking development initiatives that shall completely transform the structure and nature and impression of the entire Rosso South constituency. We can and must give thanks, my dear people. Development is an expensive, continuous, carefully planned, wisely articulated, well thought of, people-centered, and systematic process. Everything cannot be done everywhere at the same time. We must remain patient, yet confidentially hopeful that our individual day will come. Our collective day has come. The development pie is large enough for all shall eat based on your assessed prioritized needs. Under my watch, no one shall be left behind. This is, this is indeed the new era with Shakira. We have cast aside the old era of Joshua. I am business. I mean business. 
There is indeed a lot of work to be done, but work we must to fulfill the needs and aspirations of our people. Servants we call ourselves, so we must serve. As your humble servant in Roseau South, I shall lead the battle for your advancement. This is all inclusive, people focus, forward thinking strategy is geared at taking you, the people of all the Rosa South, into the highest platform of sustainable development. My dear people, this is just a start, a sign of greater things to come. It is, it is the manifest intent of myself and the common wish of you, the people, to re-elect the Dominica Labor Party. Restore labor to the elected benches of parliament and to work with this carried-led DLP to fast-track the process for the complete and sustainable transformation of the Roseau South constituency. I am with you. I am for you. You are definitely with me. You are doubtlessly for me. Together, we are an unmovable force for progress. Vote DLP. Vote Shakira. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out this evening. I thank you. And this, my friend, comes the end of our formal function. At this time, we just invite you to mix and mingle, to share your, your own views with each other, to have a little ent entertainment, to do an application form, and have a little refreshment. Thank you very much to people of Roseau constituency, and good night.